Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Boulder. On this last day of autumn, winter solstice eve, the second shortest day of the year. My name is Steve Todd, and I will be the worship leader for today's service. <clears throat> we welcome all at the Unitarian Universalist Church of Boulder. This Sunday, just as a reminder, Reverend Jeremy has asked us to do a little prep work for today's sermon. First, to print off one of the five labyrinth designs that were emailed out this week. And those are being posted in the chat. If you haven't already done that, you can click one of those links. And second, to find an object small enough to fit in the palm of your hand that you find tactilely interesting. A small toy, perhaps the ring you were wearing, a figurine or action adventure hero, would all work. If you haven't had a chance to already, we will now share, uh, yeah, I already said that, the five labyrinths are in the chat. Now, if you are a new visitor, please email our office manager, Amy Zen, and let us know how you found us. You will find her email in the Zoom chat as well. Weekly chalice lightings, are an important part of our Sunday morning worship. And we are inviting any interested members or friends of UUCB to volunteer to be a chalice lighter, or for that matter, to join the worship team. It's a chance for you to share your brief personal reflection about your experience with UUCB. Please email um, the office administrator, Amy Zen, of your interest. Her email is in the chat and on the church website. And the worship team can share written instructions and help you get started. Thanks very much for considering doing that. Our church website has a great deal of information about the church and activities, and that link is also in the chat. And now, please ensure that your microphones remain muted and join us for worship. morning, everybody. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, hear these words of invitation from my colleague, Reverend Leslie Takahashi. Walk the maze within your heart. Guide your steps into its questioning curves. This labyrinth is a puzzle leading you deeper into your own truths. Listen in the twists and turns. Listen in the openness within all searching. Listen, a wisdom within you calls to a wisdom beyond you. And in that dialogue lies peace. May it be so. I'll share it. come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? Where do we come from? Mystery, mystery, life is a riddle and a mystery, mystery, mystery. Life is a riddle and a mystery. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Where do we come from? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Where do we come from? What are we? Where are we going? Mystery, life is a 
If you have a personal chalice or candle near you now, please get ready to light it. And we invite you to type into the chat box where your chalice is lit, the street or neighborhood or what city, if you're joining us from outside of Boulder County. And now I'd like to introduce our chalice lighter for today, Karen Morgan. Good morning. I'm Karen Morgan and I've been a member of this church for 27 years. I performed a chalice lighting in June of 1997 and again in July of 2017. There may have been a time in between there as well, but I was only able to find two of my scripts. I'm sure you all remember exactly what I said. So of course, I will go on. This morning, I'd like to talk about faithfulness to our community. The first time I ever attended UCB I met Forrest Whitman. Just a few weeks later, I received a letter in the mail about he was gone due to his behavior. For months, the leadership and the congregation were talking about healing and recovery. I was clueless, but I hung in there because I was so impressed by the earth flag and the peace flag at the front of the sanctuary and the absence of a man suffering on a cross. Then began a series of ministers, some of whom worked out better than others. In Boston, we were known as a troublesome church. There were personnel crises, disagreements, a split into two congregations. A Lutheran minister once told me in a sermon, you stick with it. A church can be kind of like a marriage. Sometimes you go through a rough patch Sometimes there are job problems or family issues. And at a church, sometimes you might not care for the RE director, or you don't think the choir is so great. And then one Sunday, a poem, a poem speaks to your soul. Or maybe you meet someone at coffee who is to become your next best friend. But like in a committed relationship, you stick with it. Things get better. I'm so glad to be here, even if it's not in person. Let's be strong and we'll get to the end of the current pandemic and meet to worship together again. We now invite all those gathered in your various locations to join together in fellowship and community as we say aloud our covenant, our congregation's covenant. We gather in fellowship to speak truth to each other to reach out and touch, and touch one, one another, another, to care, care with, with each, each other, each other and, and to and seek, seek the truth, truth divine. divine. So, so be it. Be it. In this time of connection with each other, with all of life, let us take a few moments to tune into our own joys and concerns. I invite you to find a place of stillness in your mind and just check in to see what is on your heart today. In the quiet of your thoughts, lift up all that weighs on you, anxieties, worries, and hurts. Whatever it is, let us hold this and each other in silence. Let us turn our minds and hearts to those we love, holding them with love, acknowledging their painful challenges and sufferings. We know 
many around us are going through moments right now of isolation, of health woes. I invite you now to share your concerns in the chat box so that we can all be together holding what is real. I will name a few of them. Please know that everything that's written in here is held with love. I know the Christmas season can be a difficult one for many people, not always full of joy, especially this year as we celebrate whatever holidays are important to us at the end of the year so far from our loved ones. We lift up prayers for Vicki, Jane, and Peter, all facing serious health issues. Some of us have lost loved ones this year and are having our first end of year season without them and I know how painful that is. We are with you and I know it's not the same. There was a lot of loss this year of people we love, of moments and events and gatherings we weren't able to do and we need to say a true sorrowful goodbye to all that wasn't able to be in 2021. Of course, for all our frontline workers, our teachers, nurses and doctors and everyone keeping our shelves stocked at the grocery store and helping us get through this time. Our love to all of you. And I invite you to continue to posting, continue posting whatever's on your heart we offer love and witness to those who are suffering. But I invite you now to shift if you are ready to bring to mind, to bring into your heart the things for which you are grateful for, the things that are bringing us joy. We must name those as well so we can be in touch with all the beauty that is also unfolding. And I invite you also to share in our chat all that beauty. Ah, the anticipation of the solstice celebration. Yes, we are close. It's my father's birthday today and I send love to him, all that love him. Can't wait for the return of the light. Yes, coming soon. Oh, the scientists. Thank you for the scientists who have worked in ways we can't even imagine, not probably sleeping much over the last year to bring us these miraculous vaccines. Safety and community at Golden West Residence, absolutely. Wherever you are in isolation, we are with you. Yes, there are deepening relationships in this time. Believe it or not, it is happening in our small groups and in other spaces as well. Isn't that wonderful? As much as Zoom is a limit, it is a connection. Keep them coming, everyone. But for all these blessings and concerns, as well as those that remain silently on our hearts, we hold this compassionate space with love. And I am so grateful for all the ways you bless each other. Ashe. Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still for once on the face of the earth. Let's not speak in any language. Let's stop for a second and not move our arms so much. It would be an exotic moment without rush, without engines. We would all be together in a sudden strangeness. Fishermen in the cold sea would not harm whales, and the man gathering salt would not look at his hurt hands. Those who prepare green wars, wars with gas, wars with fire, victories with no survivors, would put on clean clothes 
and walk along with their brothers in the shade doing nothing. What I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. If we were not so single-minded about keeping our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Perhaps the earth can teach us as when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet and I will go. One of the most terrifying things I have ever done was to sit silently in a room full of people. But if you want to hang out with Quakers, you kind of have to do it. And for some strange reason, I found myself really wanting to hang out with some Quakers. So there I was being silent in a meeting house, totally silent for very long periods of time. It's almost deafening at first, that silence. So much space, so alone with our thoughts. But eventually for me, it changed. In all of that silence, I found or rediscovered or at least got better acquainted with that quiet, inner voice that comes to us in stillness. It was pretty amazing at first, like seeing something in a new way that you had just seen so many times you took it for granted. Like many, I had long been searching for some kind of special connection. And I had been looking outside of myself the whole time, misled by the Western conceptions of God I was exposed to. It was like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz realizing the magic was on her feet the entire journey. Could it be that the relationship I was looking for was waiting quietly inside me this whole time? And I do believe that we all know that still small voice within that I'm talking about. Call it your conscience, call it the collective unconscious, call it God or whatever you want. But I have yet to meet a person who doesn't know what I'm talking about, who doesn't have at least some 
fleeting relationship with that inner voice that feels like perhaps it brings new information and wisdom to the table if you pay attention to it. But that is the thing. You have to pay attention to it. And this inner voice is a little bit of a diva. You have to make a lot of space for that inner voice to open up. And we're really not great at making space for anything these days. I was struck recently by the current applicability of a 150 year old quote from Henry David Thoreau who wrote that, in proportion as our inward life fails, we go more constantly and desperately to the post office. You may depend on it, that the poor fellow who walks away with the greatest number of letters proud of his extensive correspondence has not heard from himself in a long time." Unquote. Merely substitute Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or CNN or whatever your social media or screen time vice is with post office in that quote, and you get the picture. The more we look for outside stimulation, whether in the form of a letter, email, Facebook status, tweet, or poke, the more we avoid our inner voice. And wow, are we ever surrounded by highly effective outside stimulation. In truth, one never needs to be alone with their thoughts again which, if you think about it, is a sweeping change from how the human experience has been since, well, forever. And while the power of the connections across space, time, and difference that these new technologies make possible are incredible, as many of us are learning, they do not come without a cost. And for many, that cost is the very real separation from our inner life and atrophying even of our ability to be in silent conversation with ourselves. Think for a moment about the last time you were alone with just your thoughts for more than a few fleeting moments. No looking at your cell phone, no listening to the TV or radio, no checking your computer, no reading a book, no doing a crossword puzzle or Sudoku, just you and your thoughts the shower, perhaps? Any intentional time beyond then? The Buddha tells us that when you have time, you should meditate at least once a day, and when you don't have time, twice a day. And of course, it's really easy to blame all the devices that distract us from this inner relationship, but I have to admit, I'm a pretty willing victim even as I wrote this message, I felt the constant draw to minimize my Word document and jump on Facebook or Reddit or ESPN or any of the dozen websites I like to distract myself with periodically. And so it was a good excuse to ask myself, what am I avoiding with all of this distraction? Some refer to outer space as the final frontier, the last great unexplored part of our universe, but I would argue that our inner space, despite its constant availability, remains the most uncharted and important to explore. And despite our deeply held feelings that we are uniquely distracted by modern life, as exhibited by our spiritual ancestor Thoreau earlier, this is hardly a new problem. And so luckily through the ages, just as we have built glorious distractions, so have we created and uncovered many beautiful spiritual technologies that do the opposite, that help us reconnect with ourselves. Meditation, breathing exercises, yoga, prayer, ecstatic dance are but a few of the most well-known. And of course, amongst that list, is the ancient spiritual technology known as the labyrinth. When speaking of the labyrinth, most people's minds first go to either that famous Greek myth about the Minotaur or to the weirdly dark and mesmerizing 1986 movie starring David Bowie of the same name. However, unlike the labyrinths in those two examples, 
today the labyrinth I'm speaking of is not a maze, but rather a single path round within a circle meant to represent the twisting and turning journey of our spiritual life. That is to say, the labyrinth that we will explore today has no choices to make. It does not branch off in directions requiring choice and failure. To the contrary, the labyrinth that I speak of today has but one path. And though it may twist and turn back on itself, it will never branch and leads only to its center. Some have called this kind of labyrinth an archetype that we can actually have direct experience of by walking. That is, each time we make our way through the labyrinth, we symbolically recreate the archetypal form of the spiritual journey. The walk is an invitation inward. With every step you take further along the path, you are invited deeper within yourself. Over the course of my life, I've had many opportunities to walk the labyrinth, and it's always a moving reminder of how powerful the inner relationship can be if it is nurtured. And I've marveled at the lessons embedded within the labyrinth's twists and turns, those moments when you feel so close to the end, but realize there's a long way to go as you wind back towards the beginning or the feeling like you've made almost no progress only to suddenly realize you're further along than you thought. If you want, it can just be a walk too, a slow, relaxing stroll, focusing you on your breath or simply just the next step. But the more you can intentionally enter into the journey, the more you allow the outside world to drop away and your next step along the path to become your sole focus, the more it will welcome you back into relationship with that still small voice within. Our surrounding community here in Boulder has many labyrinths that are open to the public to walk and it can be an excellent COVID friendly outdoor activity. At the end of the service today, we will share an excellent document created by today's chalice lighter and reader, Karen Morgan, that you can use to find our local labyrinths. She reminds me that before heading out, it's always smart to call ahead and check if it is currently open to the public. But we're in our homes today and not together. So we're gonna explore them in a different manner. And we're gonna begin with the printed out labyrinth that hopefully most, if not all of you have by now. We have several different versions and I hope you printed one out. This is the one that called to me. So I'll be using that one. In a moment, some calm music will begin to play for about two minutes. And as it begins, I invite you to trace your chosen labyrinth as slowly and deliberately as you can imagine, as you can manage. This is not a race to the finish. It's an attempt to give your brain something very simple to focus on in order to free it up to do other magical things. When you get to the center, slowly retrace your steps out. And when finished, I invite you to share any short reflections on the experience in the chat. Okay, let's begin the music and trace slowly along the path of our labyrinth now.
if you're still working on your labyrinth, that's just fine. Take another moment. I see lots of heads down, focused. Janet and Bob share that it felt like coming home. I know when I was using my three circle labyrinth, every time I made a turn back, it just brought a smile to my face. There was something so pleasing about that turn. See some of you have finished up. Feel free to stick with it or return to it again after the service. And if you have any short reflections you want to put in the chat about that, please do. There they are. Calming. Yeah, I agree, Susan. I really like the knowledge that there's just one path that I don't have to worry about decisions or anything. So keep checking out that chat. I'm going to talk a little bit more as we move to our second activity. As I said, I'm a big fan of the labyrinth, but it's also as we're seeing today, it's not always the most practical tool unless you use one of these printed out labyrinths. To really step into a labyrinth fully, you need a lot of dedicated space. But there are other similar spiritual technologies available to us at a much smaller scale that are a little easier to bring into our daily practice. As I was reminded on my last trip to India, it was the final evening my wife and I would spend in Varanasi, which is one of my favorite places in the world there in the section of town known as Kashi, Shiva came down to earth and stood directly in the Ganges as it passed through town. And so it, it is one of, if not the most sacred places in the world to Hindus who come daily to bathe in its holy waters and who want nothing more when they die than to be cremated on its banks and their ashes joined with the mother Ganga at that very spot. So it's a very high karma place already. And then throw in the fact that it's the single longest continuously inhabited city in the world. And you have one magical place that I can never get enough of. And it's winding and chaotic streets in which ancient ritual mingles freely with modern life, have an incredibly labyrinthine feel that somehow always leads you where you need to go whether you reach your intended destination or not. That night, that final night we had in Varanasi, my wife and I never did find the restaurant we were searching for, but instead ended up in a little shop selling beautiful Hindu art and handicrafts. We marveled at intricately carved gods and goddesses and oohed and awed at the beautifully painted images of battle and heroic deeds. After a time of gawking, I fell into a lovely conversation with the shop owner, and somehow the conversation turned to labyrinths. At this, the man got a gleam in his eye, and he steered me to a quiet corner of the crowded shop, eager to show me something. When I caught up with him, he showed me this. This is my daily practice, he explained. Every morning, when I wake up and every night before bed, I take this in my hand and let my fingers slowly move over every edge until suddenly I realized I've traced it in its entirety and it feels like no time has passed, but 
it's 20 minutes later. That's how I meditate with my fingers. Well, I'm always looking for a new spiritual tool for my toolbox. So I eagerly asked to buy one and instead he gifted me this one. For the last two years, it has sat next to me on my desk and I've turned to it many times. Over time, the process has worn it into my mind and now just placing it in my hand and feeling its weight in my palm communicates to my inner voice that soon space will be made for it to speak again. And this morning, since we all can't go out to a labyrinth together, we are, as the telephone book used to say, letting our fingers do the walking. And I want you to invite, I want to invite you to try this practice with me. So I hope you've had time to find a small object. It doesn't need to be anything explicitly sacred. Place it in your hand, feel its weight, and we will once again play about two minutes of music and allow you some time to try this out. Go slow, be deliberate. Really try to feel every minute detail of the object as you move your finger over it. So let's give it a try. And again, when you're done, please feel encouraged to share a short reflection in the chat. Let's begin the music now. had a few requests to hold this on the screen a little longer in the chat. So let me get that up there. And I think it's supposed to be Shiva's feet because that's really what they're into in that town, the feet that were in the Ganges. Alternately, someone said they thought it was Buddha's feet on a lotus. I don't know. Please feel free to share any reflections on either of those experiences with your community of love and accountability in the chat box there. And thank you all for coming on that journey with me this morning. The great thing about that inner voice is that no matter how far you stray from it, no matter how long you keep yourself distracted, it will be there waiting for you in stillness. May it be so. Ashe.
Sorry. Let me start again. The offering we take each Sunday isn't just a routine habit. It's an opportunity to recommit to this place and to this people. Our offering is an affirmation, a yes. When we give, we say yes to something we value. With our gifts, freely given, may we say yes to the values of our faith. May our offering help us practice Unitarian Universalism within and beyond our congregation as tools to empower our mission. This month, all donations go to support UUCB ministries and programs. You can make a donation now using the link posted in our chat by sending a check to UUCB or scanning the QR code on the next slide or on the slide with your mobile phone. Be as generous, please, as you can. We will now receive the offering. May our gifts be used to enact justice, bringing peace and love to the Boulder community.
Wow, thank you, Deborah, and thank you, Amanda. I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank you both for the incredible music and the videos that you've been created for us. It's just an incredibly magical part of our service. Thank you. I'll remind you all we have Christmas Eve services coming up this week. Thursday evening, you'll have two different options. One of them will be a effort shared between our congregation, Boulder Valley UU and Loop. And that will be at 4 p.m. live streaming. And at 7 p.m. there'll be a larger front range uh, cluster effort. And both of those will have a bunch of participation from our community. So I hope you can join one or both of those. Now let's prepare to extinguish our chalices. As we prepare our hearts and minds to return to the world, as we get ready to leave behind the sacred stillness of our gathered love, remember these words from Joseph Campbell who wrote, we have not even to risk the adventure alone for the heroes of all time have gone before us. The labyrinth is thoroughly known. We have only to follow the thread of the hero path. And where we had thought to find an abomination, we shall find a God. Where we had thought to travel outward, we will come to the center of our own existence. Where we had thought to be alone, we shall be with all the world." Unquote. May it be so. Ashe. We invite you to stay with us now in our Zoom rooms for a time of online fellowship and discussion. And we should uh, especially note that this is one of our Sundays for your board is listening. That means a couple of our board of trustees members will stay in this room for anyone that wants to discuss matters of the church. So, Barb and Fred, our greeters extraordinaire, are here to tell us how this is going to work. Hi, good morning. This is Fred. 